Hello there everybody and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be going into Unit 5, Topic 2 of AP Psychology, Encoding. Encoding is the first stage of memory. This is where you process the information to prepare it to be stored. Remember from our last video, whenever we are trying to encode information, we utilize shallow processing and deep processing. Shallow processing is basic surface level processing. For example, when we're focusing on the appearance of words or basic structures, while deep processing is based on the meaning of the information and the information is being retained better. Now there are different types types of encoding. Visual encoding is when we encode information by visual elements we observe. For example, when reading a book, you may notice that certain sections of the book have a specific font or specific color. There's also acoustic encoding, which is when the different sound elements help with the encoding process. For example, some people may remember information by using rhyme. Tactile encoding is when we use the feeling of touch when encoding the information. For example, remembering the feel of certain textures. Organizational encoding is when we process information in terms of a specific sequence. This can take the form of lists, groups, or focus on the relationship between different items. There is also elaborative encoding, which is when you pair new information with prior knowledge. Here you are remembering new information by linking it to information you already know. The last type of encoding is semantic encoding, which is when you focus on the meaning or the context of the information. This type of encoding is used with deep processing and is one of the most effective encoding methods. Now there are also different strategies you can use to help improve the encoding process. Some of these strategies are more impactful than others, but all of these can be used to help with memory. Many of them, I bet yourself, have already used in your own life. For example, maybe you've crammed for a test the night before the test or the hour before. This mass practice type of encoding and trying to learn all the information at once is not the most effective. We learn information much better when the encoding process is spread out over a period of time. This is known as the spacing effect. This is the tendency of distributed practice or studying to yield better long-term retention. For example, if you study for five hours one night, you might feel like you really understand the information. But if you distribute your practice over five days and only study for one hour each night, you'll be able to remember the information a lot better. When you study five hours in a row, you might become overconfident and you think you understand the information only to forget it the next day. But when you space out your studying, you'll be able to better understand what information you understand and what information needs to be reviewed. Mass practice or cramming the night before might seem like a good way to study and you can quickly remember information, but it often doesn't last. If you practice distributed practice and review information daily and spread your encoding process out over a period of time, you'll see better results with your long-term memory. This is why it's important for you to develop good study habits and not just cram the night before a test. One way in which you can make your distributed practice even more effective is by testing yourself. Research has shown that when we take tests, it not only assesses your understanding of the information, but it also helps your memory. This is known as the testing effect. This is just one of the reasons why I include short practice quizzes at the end of all my videos and why I include practice quizzes and practice tests in my ultimate review packet. By reviewing the information over a period of time and testing yourself, you can improve your retention of the information. So we can see that time plays a factor in our memory. But what are some other strategies that you can use to improve the encoding process? The first strategy is arguably one of the least effective, but it's commonly used and it's rote rehearsal. This is when we continuously repeat the information we're trying to remember. Maybe you've used this method right before a test or a quiz when you're trying to remember key bits of information. Or maybe you're at a party and you're trying to learn all these new people's names. I would bet more often than not, you actually ended up forgetting the new information for your test or quiz. And for the people's names, well, by the end of the night, you couldn't remember many of them. Rote rehearsal just isn't that effective since you're just repeating the information. But you're not going any deeper into the meaning, the context, or making any connections to previously learned information. If you would have done some of those things, it would have been easier to study for that test or quiz or remember those names at the party. A more effective way of remembering information would be to use chunking. This is when you organize information into meaningful groups. For example, you could use acronyms to remember information or create lists and group the information. Let's say you're trying to remember all the states in the United States of America. Instead of trying to use rote rehearsal and just repeating all the names of the states on a big list, you could chunk the states into different regions. This would make it easier to remember the different states instead of just trying to look at this long list. All right, one last strategy that can help you with the encoding process is mnemonic devices. There are a bunch of different mnemonic devices you can utilize and each one has its own strengths and weaknesses. A mnemonic device is when you link images with the information you're trying to learn. Traditionally, the more unique the image, the easier it'll be to remember the information. Hopefully these different encoding strategies help you with your own studies. Now in order to check to make sure you're understanding, let's practice. Answer the question 
questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet to review these concepts later and maximize your studies. That way you can get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.